Now, doctors moved to begin strike on the 1st of April as the federal government, in a last-minute dialogue, weighed in to stop industrial action. And the People's Democratic Party says Buhari's medical trip to London is an indictment on his presidency healthcare delivery program. The plus politics starts now, and I am Justin Akadonia. The National Association of Resident Doctors, NOT, says it will embark on an indefinite strike from April 1st if the federal government fails to meet its demands. Meanwhile, the federal government has invited members of the association to a meeting with a view of averting the planned strike. Now, discussing with me is the immediate past vice president of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Julian Ojebo. Uh, many thanks for joining us, Dr. Ojebo, on the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right, let us just start with one of the reactions, although it sounds political. But in your opinion, looking at all that is happening in the nation's healthcare system, would you say that the healthcare system in Nigeria is failed? Yeah, uh, yeah of course, we can actually boldly state that the healthcare system in the country has failed. Um, it has failed repeatedly because um, if someone is actually serious with his job, um, you can be having these repeated episodes of um, industrial disharmony um, every now and then upon um, issues that you have actually consented to. Um, these issues we've been fighting for, um, it's not just for ourselves. Um, I think it's disheartening that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is actually jetting out of the country to seek for uh, medical help. And his spokesperson actually put it as his routine medical checkup. So if it's a routine medical checkup and you do not trust that your health system that you have being president of the country can actually take care of that, then it's actually a problem. So yes, we can categorically say that the country has, um, the health system in the country has actually collapsed and failed. We can make bold to state that. All right. Let me just take it up from where you stopped, uh, considering the president's um, trip to the UK for a routine check. That says a lot to many Nigerians from different uh, quarters, even medical experts and not medical experts. Does it really mean that um, the nation's uh, health infrastructure are not adequate or they're not uh, at the position they should be to take care of these seemingly routine checks? Now we can't even say that it's adequate. It's far below adequate. It's um, way below inadequate, actually. Um, Take for a case in study, the National Hospital um, in Abuja here. Um, they run a private, pri a private partnership with other institutions for investigate for, for um, devices that if you go abroad, actually seen in general hospitals. And National Hospital is supposed to be the top premier hospital, one of the top premier hospitals in the country. All across the six geopolitical zones, there's decay in the health system. So you, we can make bold to say that all across the country, there's inadequacy of health facilities. Now, do we have the manpower to actually prefer or provide um, healthcare? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I can make bold to say that if you check the itinerary of the president and all the health workers is going to meet abroad, you must see an Nigerian in that team. There will be an Nigerian in that team. 5% of the um, health force of doctors in the United States of America are Blacks. 5% are Blacks. 2% of that 5% are Nigerians doing so well applying their trade. So the problem is not, it's not about manpower, but infrastructural decay. All right, in Nigeria, no, there's no five-star hospital in Nigeria. There's no three-star hospital. But yet the president is going to two-star hospitals in the United Kingdom, in the United States, to take care of himself. So what we are saying that you can actually do all it takes to revamp the health system. COVID-19 actually did expose. We've been crying and saying that 
there's decay, there's rot in the health sector. COVID-19 came and actually showed to the world that Africa, particularly Nigeria, has nothing to offer. So this is a clear uh, point of statement to say that all we've been saying over time, over the years, they're all true. Okay, so inadequate is actually a better word if you want to use that. If there's any word worse than that, then we should use that. So invariably, you're saying from all indications, we don't have five, four, three stars. So we're below just one star, according to you. But let's talk about um, the main issues uh, right now. Why is the National Association of Resident Doctors going on strike? Uh, bearing in mind that there were issues last year and there were, cold, uh, there were you know, threats of strikes and every other thing. Are the issues not being addressed? What are the immediate demands as we speak? Now, the demands that we've made are actually demands that every sane person hearing those demands, we know that um, Nigerian doctors have actually been very patriotic. Now, the lowest Arab on our hierarchy, which are the house officers, they have been employed for months now, over 90 days, they have not been paid their salaries, over 90 days, okay? The other sector, the other section of um, um, resident doctors that are not on the IPPIS platform, have not been paid for three months and some of them for four months. Okay, now COVID-19 came. They said that they've created the COVID-19 hazard inducement allowances that following subsequently when they're going to start discussing the um, hazard allowance for um, all healthcare workers. As we speak, the healthcare workers still receive a paltry sum of 5,000 Naira. So these are the issues that we've been complaining about. So if they had solved all of these issues, will not be here, okay? We are saying that there's decay in the health sector, infrastructural decay, and nothing is being done to it. Our hospitals are dilapidated. The hospitals have nothing to show for it, okay? Doctors have to move from one geopolitical region to another geopolitical region in search for what seems to be adequate to train themselves to become specialists in these fields of study. So yes, we are saying that, we cannot continue receiving that paltry sum of 5,000. Okay, let me butt in so here, we're saying Dr. Ajebo. It has to be readjusted. We did have um, memorandums of terms of settlement that we agreed upon last year, which was not, which was not done. All right, Dr. Ajebo, okay, so let's talk about this hazard. Let's talk about this hazard allowance. To wake up to his responsibilities. All right, let's talk more about this uh, controversial hazard allowance. Uh, we understand that um, doctors are being paid um, 5,000 naira, but there was a time when we heard of uh, an issue of increment. Was there ever an increment? Uh, and what's the difference between the hazard allowance and, uh, you know, specifically the COVID-19 allowance, uh, which we hear that was about um, 30,000 Can you just throw more light on that? We understand that the uh, COVID-19 allowance uh, you know, was paid for just about three months. Justin, let me try and make it very clear. Now, all healthcare workers all around the country get 5,000 Naira in every federal um, tertiary health institution in the country. Okay, at the wake of COVID, we approached them and said, we cannot, we've, we've been grappling with other um, transmissible diseases as it were, with just minimum or nothing to show for it in terms of hazard. While some persons go to the National Assembly and rake in the millions of Naira in, in the phase four hardship allowance, we're saying that that is too small for healthcare workers to lay down their lives for it. Okay, now we now went ahead and they said, we are going to pass on the 5,000 Naira. We are going to have what we call the COVID hazard inducement allowance which is going to run for a period of six months. And everybody called on um, all healthcare workers, if we should go back to work, it's time for you to go back to work. We now said, okay. We've listened to the people we're treating, we've listened to the people we're preferring solutions to. Let's go back to work with the mindset that the federal government would do all it's supposed to do. Three months down the line, Payment for this COVID um, inducement allowance was epileptic. Not all the centers got their monies. Okay. Now, nine months after, we are still in the same fight, saying 
give us what is due us. Pay us our hazard allowance that we deserve. And what do we say? We said, give us 50% of our consolidated salaries across board. All healthcare workers, this is what we want because we put our lives on the, li on the line. On the daily, we expose ourselves to these various hazards from Lassa fever to COVID to HIV to hepatitis and a whole other gamut and a whole other gamut of diseases that are out there. So we're saying that for us to have this, we need our hazard allowance. Now we went forward and said, most of our members have died. We're not talking about our members that have died in the past. The ones that died in the wake of COVID-19. Where is the debt in service um, insurance for these ones that have died? We've lost over 11 of our members to COVID-19. How are their relatives going to feel like when they have nothing to show for after their death, after they willingly sacrificed their lives, put their lives on the line, and made sure that they gave um, quality delivery of service to the people of Nigeria in the wake of COVID? Okay, nothing was done for that. Nothing was done towards that. So this is why it's actually painful and shameful and embarrassing that the government of today does not listen to the, to the, to the cries of healthcare workers. All they're interested in is politics and politics. Let's talk so about the debt in um, service um, insurance uh, right now. We should be uh, like uh, uh, a thing put in place for workers in the medical line just in case uh, anything happens to them so their beneficiaries uh, would not actually have to suffer after they have um, toyed for the nation. How does it really work? Is it a pool uh, where doctors contribute and how come about since 17 of your members have died in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, their family members are yet to receive anything. Now, this, this is all bureaucratic bottlenecks. We are saying that when there are when when stop gaps in the processes of people getting their funds, some persons should be made to pay. But we are in a country where nobody pays for anything. You just get to do anything you like and no one um, seems to question you. So what we're saying is this, there's a the group life insurance. They showed it to us on paper. Why has it not materialized from paper to the pockets of the families that have lost their loved ones? Why has that still not been done? It's group, um, so, uh, group, group insurance for these people. We do agree, thank you for doing that. But why have they not gotten their monies? That is what we are saying. So some persons have to be held accountable for failure of delivery of service. We've done our own part. We put our lives on the line to make sure that we render uh, service to our people. In return, we should have this positive uh, mechanism where we say when we lose our loved ones, when we die in the process of delivering health, uh, delivering health service or health care to our people, we are get to be compensated and, the, and our loved ones we left behind are paid appropriately when we are no more. That's what we're saying. All right. them. Okay, Dr. Ojebo, let's talk more about uh, this issue of strike. One would have thought that by now there should be some sort of a, a channel that has been established between doctors and uh, maybe the executive or the legislature, all stakeholders in this uh, particular sector to ensure that uh, these issues should not really just uh, get so bad and turn all right. One would have thought that uh, there should be other ways of mitigating against all of these issues without having to resort to uh, strike all the time. Now again, Justin, the thing is, people that are supposed to be held accountable for failure of leadership are not held accountable. Appointees of the government don't do their jobs. We've had countless meetings, countless sessions, and all these have fallen on deaf ears. Nobody seems to be taking um, the bull by the horn to do what they're supposed to do. If they do what they're supposed to do, we won't be here. You won't hear our voices because they've done what they're supposed to do. But in a situation where nobody is doing what he's supposed to do, then we'll be back to the same, the same Ori situation like you put it. Why so, are they not doing what they are supposed the to do? 
Okay, let me, uh, why are they not doing what they're supposed to do? Is it a case of uh, insincerity on the part of government, or is it that they've not done their, maybe their needs assessments to find out uh, what they have in ground, if they can indeed uh, pay all of these uh, demands as they come in, or is it that they just want to sign agreements so that doctors would go back, you know, to their hospitals and uh, after a few months I will get back to the discussion table. Is it a thing of insincerity on the part of government? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of insincerity. And it's a, big, it's a bit of failure to do the needs assessment, as it were. Because you can't just wake up and sign any document. You have to check all the I's and dot all the T's and be sure that you, at this point in time, can meet these particular demands, as it were, that you actually um, decided to have an agreement about. So there's, um, there's this fusion of insincerity, um, Crass ineptitude by executive appointees of government and and lack of willpower to actually do all of this. There's a fusion of all of these. All right. From what we understand, uh, come Thursday, first of April. Uh, when some Nigerians might think uh, it is April Fool, uh, the National Association of Resident Doctors uh, uh, would comment, uh, comments and strike uh, if the federal government fails to uh, meet uh, your agreements today. Can you uh, just walk us through how the strike would be? Is it a total strike? Are you paralyzing all activities at the hospital? Just what exactly are we expecting to see from tomorrow? It's a total, it's a total indefinite strike from 8 a.m. 1st of April. It's not April's Fool. It's a total indefinite strike. At 8 a.m., we'll be drawing all form of service from the emergency room to the intensive care to the um, wards to the labs, where we'll we join all our services. And we'll be told all our members should um, stay home from 8 a.m. Those that are supposed to hand over patients to the consultants are supposed to do that until the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 30 a.m., hand over the uh, patients to the consultants who own the patients and um, go back home until the government is sincere enough to do what it's supposed to do. So specifically now, what uh, will be the fate of um, patients who may have some critical or emergencies uh, at the moment right now? Yeah, the, the consultant, the medical and dental consultant that's issue of Nigeria, they are still there to give service to the people of Nigeria. But what we are saying on on our own part, the Nigerian Assembly of Resident Doctors, we form the major bulk of the workforce. We are the foot soldiers when it comes to um, specialist healthcare delivery in the country. We're saying that our finances are down. We're saying our emotional intelligence is being reading upon. We're saying um, our psychological, uh, emotional, financial, all of the things you can think about, all of them, everything is on the floor. At this moment, we cannot even have our own sanity, as it were, to say we can deliver service to the people. A healthy doctor is a doctor that can make sure that the patient becomes healthy. A sick doctor cannot make a sick patient healthy. So we are sick emotionally, we are sick financially, we are sick mentally, and we cannot continue going this path. This is one of the major reasons why um, there's brain drain all across. All right, well, we must say a very big thank you to Dr. Ojeba. That's as much as we can take on that particular discussion. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the People's Democratic Party labels Buhari's medical treat as a direct indictment of his presidency. Stay with us.